Assalamu alaikum. How are you all? I hope you have enjoyed your weekend, right? Okay, we were discussing uh, about the foreign policy of Pakistan, right? So, uh, and uh, we had discussed about the guiding principles of the foreign policy of Pakistan. Now, if we analyze the guiding principle, you, we, can, we can easily say that they are rooted in the Islamic principles of uh, the Pakistan, uh, Pakistan's ideology, right? So, Islamic ideology, these guiding principle, uh, principles are rooted in the Islamic ideology of Pakistan. So, the foreign policy of Pakistan is basically influenced by the ideology of Pakistan, right? Well, Pakistan is uh, an Islamic non-aligned country. It supports Islamic values, firmly upholds the above mentioned principles like the guiding principles, right? Uh, and uh, it, it is working for the promotion of a just world order, right? Where there will be, um, you know, justice will be prevailed and every state will be treated equally, right? So Pakistan is working for it. Now what are the factors of Pakistan's foreign policy? There are some external factors and some internal factors as well. Internal factors includes, uh, it includes the geographical location of Pakistan. This is internal, right? Because Pakistan, please do not talk, please do not talk, right? If you need to talk, you need to be, you should talk to me. Okay. Uh, internal factors include geography of Pakistan, geographical location of Pakistan then the size of the country these are the factors which influence or which somehow you know determine our foreign policy and then uh, natural capacity of the country what is the natural capacity of this country like you know uh, resources of the country um, and then even geographical location access to the sea and this and that right so uh, it all um, you know amounts to the uh, natural capacity of the country so if we analyze these internal factors of Pakistan, the geographical location of the country plays an important role in the formulation of foreign policy of Pakistan, right? We are uh, situated on a very important uh, geographical location on the globe, right? So we provide an access to uh, the Central Asian country and uh, due to our proximity with Afghanistan, uh, the international community uh, is dependent on Pakistan, uh, not only currently, but it was dependent on Pakistan in the past as well when the Soviet invaded, uh, uh, Soviets invaded Afghanistan, right? So this is the geographical location which gives us this uh, importance. Then the size of the country, so uh, size and shape you can say that, right? So the size of the country is, uh, it's a moderate size country, not that big country not that a small country right and then it's an elongated kind of a country so you know uh, we do not have that much depth when it comes to um, uh, from east to west right so we are a narrow s a kind of country not uh, uh, having an oval shape or something like that so it also determines our po uh, policy you know uh, situation on one border or one side of the border like for example if we have got some problem with uh, Afghanistan that can easily have an impact on uh, areas which are even bordering with India you know because the the, the depth of the country is not that much and uh, vice versa right so the situation of uh, uh, the impact of uh, bad or good situation on one side of the border can have an impact on the other side of the border uh, from east to west, not from north to, to south, right? Then you, you can say that uh, with the, the deterioration of the security situation in the country over the past couple of years, uh, the northern areas as they have been located in the north and quite away from the rest of the country, they were somehow, they, they somehow remained out of the uh, impact of that uh, deteriorating law and order situation right so the this is just because that uh, uh, it wasn't easy for anybody to reach over there and uh, create uh, chaos or turmoil right so this is or, or, or the same lines you can then uh, you know analyze the situation when there is uh, 
uh, when the security situation in Peshawar is not condu conducive, you can see that the security situation in Lahore is also not conducive, right? Because they they are not that much uh, located, you know, uh, away from each other, right? So this is uh, the size and shape of the country. Okay, then external uh, factors. It w it includes uh, like you know alliances of Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan is aligned with uh, many countries like right now Pakistan is a major non-NATO ally of the United States of America and the international uh, or the NATO states right uh, in the war against terrorism in Afghanistan. So these alliances they shape your foreign policy. They ask you to do something and not to do something. There are do's and don'ts in, uh, in alliances. So when you are, uh, you, you are part of an alliance then you need to follow those uh, do's and don'ts. right? So uh, that is why it shape uh, uh, alliances shape our foreign policy. Uh, like previously, we will be discussing it in detail in in, in the coming class. Okay, uh, not in the coming class in this current class. Then, uh, what is the power structure? The international power structure. Who is dominant? Who is the dominant power? And uh, what is the nature of your relation with that dominant power? That also shape your foreign policy, right? Okay. And then, what is world opinion? If the world opinion is going, is is demanding for one thing and the country is doing something else, then that country won't survive. That country would face a lot of criticism, right? A lot of sanctions. So uh, the world opinion also shapes the foreign policy of Pakistan. Like after 9/11, the world opinion was almost um, against the presence of Al-Qaeda and the ex existence of the Taliban government in Afghanistan. So Pakistan could not resist uh, international efforts. It, it just had to, you know, bow to the international demands and the world opinion and, you know, uh, took a U-turn on the Afghan foreign policy immediately after the 9-11, right? So that was under, you can say, the power structure and under the world opinion, right? Okay. What are the current major focusing points of Pakistan's foreign policy? Uh, well, you know, uh, there are external and internal challenges to the national identity, territorial integrity and independence. So the, 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 the foreign policy uh, focusing point is, you know, uh, this preser preservation of these three aspects, right? Like national identity as a Muslim state, we, we are a Muslim country. We uh, got our independence in the name of Islam, right? To practice Islam, so that is uh, uh, the national identity as a Muslim state. So we need to preserve it. This is the um, uh, cornerstone of the uh, cornerstone of the foreign policy of Pakistan. Then territorial integrity of the country, right? Pakistan should not compromise on the territorial integrity of uh, the country. So uh, that is why uh, the security of the, the state and we invest a lot in the security of Pakistan and um, uh, in the defense of Pakistan a lot of budget is uh, spent over there, right? And to preserve our, our independence, right? And then we need to have close relations with the Muslim states. This is another basic principle of uh, the foreign policy of Pakistan. So uh, these are the focusing point, the current focusing point, right? This is what Pakistan uh, is always focused on. Okay. Then again, Pakistan says that okay, all states as several states, they are equal, right? And no state is superior to another state, right? And then uh, bilateralism, like you know, relations between two states. So Pakistan also, like you know, it says, okay, every state is equal, but then you know, it cultivates relations with uh, other states on one-to-one -one basis as well. Mutuality of interest, you know, win-win situation. When there is a mutual interest, then you uh, are a natural ally of that particular party, all right? And non-interference in each other's domestic affairs. Uh, this is the uh, cardinal principle or cardinal features of Pakistan's foreign policy that it will uh, not interfere in the domestic interest or the dom domestic affairs of other countries, right? There are exceptions as I have uh, discussed as, uh, um, uh, as I have discussed that in the previous class. There are some exceptions are there, but <coughs> you cannot ignore exceptions. They must always be there. 
Okay. Uh, then uh, what is uh, another current focusing point of the foreign policy? Well, you know, uh, Pakistan believes in the norms and institutions of international system like, you know, uh, international human rights law, international humanita humanitarian law, and then the Charter of the United Nations and then United Nations in itself. So Pakistan believes in it, right? <coughs> But at the same time, it is asking for restructuring of uh, these bodies, right? Because there are, you know, there are, uh, in the United Nations Security Council, what happens? There are total 15 members of the Security Council, right? Not the General Assembly. And five of those 15 members, they are the permanent members known as the P5, right? And these P5 members, they have the veto right. So if uh, even one of those members, if, if it says no, then nothing can be passed right from the security council and this is the security council which matters it is like you know the 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 cabinet of the united nations right the security council is like the cabinet of the united nations because one is the general assembly where all the member states they sit and they have one vote but then the matter is resolved in the security council as well you know so uh, pakistan is uh, asking for the restructuring of some of these uh, mm, institutions so that all states can enjoy uh, sovereign equality over there, right? Then uh, Pakistan also identifies itself with the economic and political concerns of the developing countries. There is a, there is a huge debate about it, right? The global north and the global south debate which is the, the domain of political economy right so the global in the global south those countries are included which are developing countries mm, usually they are they have gotten independence they were uh, under colonial rule right so this is the global south and then the global north is the developed country developed countries right even australia which is in the south is part of the global north right so uh, it is on the basis of uh, technological advancement and economic status of a country. So in these north-south debates and you know in, in all these things Pakistan is uh, uh, Pakistan has always raised its, its voice in favor of the developing countries because they say that okay the developed countries the, the global south main uh, point is that the de developed countries they exploit our resources they do not give anything to us right uh, uh, even technology which is needed uh, for the economic uplift in the current era, the technology is denied to them. So, uh, and then on the other hand, the raw material they, that is extracted from the developing countries like the African countries and the Asian countries, but technology is not transferred to them, so the profit goes to the developed countries. Right, so this is, uh, so Pakistan uh, has always raised its concerns on, um, on part of the developing countries. Uh, okay, <laughs> then uh, it abides by the Charter of the United Nations, then it takes active part in the deliberations of the United Nations and, in, and other international and regional organizations like SARC, OIC, right? So Pakistan takes an active part in it and it abides by the um, Charter of the United Nations, right, as a member of it. Then Pakistan supports the right of self-determination for, uh, for the subjugated nations, right? Opposition to colonialism, right? I, I hope you understand it, what is colonialism and what is self-determination, right? And uh, peaceful resolution of interstate disputes, like what, wherever there are interstate disputes, Pakistan says that there should be a peaceful resolution of these disputes, right? Then arms control, Pakistan believes on it that there should arms raised should should not be there right uh, nuclear non-proliferation should be there but then when it comes to the um, security of the state against India then Pakistan cannot ignore security demands of uh, the country so that is why Pakistan became a nuclear state as well in when in 1975 uh, 70, 74 India detonated its uh, first nuclear bomb so then Pakistan felt the need that it should now become a nuclear state as well because its rival has got this capacity to annihilate this country, right? So that is why uh, then Pakistan started developing its own nuclear program. Otherwise, 
uh, it was not needed, right? And then promotion of peace and stability through international and regional cooperation, right? So this is, uh, uh, these are some of the pr uh, focusing points of Pakistan's foreign policy uh, and uh, it follows these points, right? Like at least these are, these are uh, uh, the basic principles which Pakistan tries to follow. Okay, <coughs> then it is the second largest Muslim country after Indonesia, right? It is a declared nuclear power and uh, it has a very important role to play for the, uh, not only for itself but for the whole of Islamic countries as well because uh, of its status as a nuclear power and the countries, particularly the, um, those countries which are Sunnis, right? they normally look towards Pakistan when uh, they are in kind of troubles. Uh, like uh, currently Saudi Arabia, it looked towards Pakistan in the crisis in Yemen. Uh, then it uh, looked towards Pakistan in the 1980s when um, uh, Masjid Haram was under attack, right? And like you know in these kind of things, so and, and even now the 34 members Islamic uh, uh, alliance, um, you know, initiated by Saudi Arabia, the ex-army chief of Pakistan, Rahil Sharif, he is heading that alliance, right? So, it, th th this position cannot be denied that Pakistan enjoys um, an important uh, position in the Islamic countries. Well, Pakistan has a violent independent foreign policy, especially when it comes to issues like, uh, you know, development of nuclear weapons. Pakistan accepted a lot of demands you know, uh, of the United Nations. But Pakistan did not bow to its demands that, you know, Pakistan should not uh, make a nuclear weapon because India had already made that. So Pakistan did not compromise on that, right? It started its own nuclear program and then luckily for Pakistan, unluckily for Pakistan when we look back, but in 1979, the United Nation was made dependent on Pakistan again when Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, right? So when it was made dependent on Pakistan, then it could not do anything about Pakistan's nuclear program because it needed Pakistan's support in Afghanistan. So that war in Afghanistan provided a leverage to Pakistan to, to carry out its nuclear program and complete it, you know. Uh, so uh, then construction of nuclear reactors, Pakistan did not compromise on it, right? Uh, though the United States of America and uh, the Western powers they put sanctions on Pakistan, but Pakistan did not uh, accept their demands. Then foreign military purchases, whenever Pakistan faced uh, the, um, you know, some kind of military sanctions of Pakistan uh, by the United Nations or by the Western countries, Pakistan looked towards other sources, but it kept on purchasing uh, uh, military hardware for uh, its security needs, right? And then there are some other in, uh, issues of vital interest in which Pakistan uh, does not accept, you know, uh, the dictates of the Western powers. Okay, Pakistan has a uh, geopolitical importance, you know, and its uh, strategic geopolitical location, you know, like uh, this is the oil, situated on the oil supply lines, right, the, the uh, through seas. And then uh, Central Asian republics or Central Asian countries, which are normally known as the cars, right? So these cars, they are oil rich. And this oil and gas and, you know, these resources, they need to be, uh, uh, they need to be, you know, uh, transported to the rest of the world and through Pakistan. Pakistan can provide that, uh, uh, that uh, facility to these countries and Pakistan can play the role of a transit uh, country for not only for Central Asian countries uh, to export their um, uh, you know oil and gas <coughs> to the rest of the world but for the rest of the world to export their goods through Pakistan to these Central Asian countries right so this is uh, um, the importance of Pakistan's location right and that is why Pakistan is why uh, pa uh, uh, Pakistan cannot be ignored Whenever policies are made for Afghanistan and, you know, so Pakistan cannot be ignored. The, uh, the rest of the world, the international powers, they just come to Pakistan and they ask Pakistan to, you know, 
uh, approve or you know at least don't become a hurdle in in, in these kind of uh, developments so then that is the importance of pakistan and if pakistan plays its cards wisely then pakistan can uh, have a lot of benefits out of this important uh, strategic location right then pakistan is an important member of the organization of islamic cooperation right as i have already discussed it is a major non nato ally right in the war against terrorism and highly disciplined military it has got a highly disciplined military so that even uh, this is a strength right and uh, because of all these factors like ally of the non nato ally right and then uh, uh, important member of the oic because pakistan is the only military power in the islamic countries you know which has got this nuclear capacity and then a disciplined military uh, as well so because of all these things uh, pakistan cannot be ignored not uh, not only by the western countries but by the islamic countries as well so pakistan has a role to play it only needs to you know Re, uh, to realize its position and realize its importance and then put its own house in order to play that positive role in the international community right well uh pakistan uh, has always uh, found it difficult to have good relations with india this is like you know historical so we cannot deny this that we we have had bad relations with india most of the times uh, over the issue of kashmir right and then we fought three wars with india so that is uh, you can say that that is also uh, foreign policy of pakistan and it can it would not compromise on kashmir even if it means war right well uh, then it ha it has got good relations with afghanistan do afghanistan in initially it was reluctant to accept pakistan as an independent state but pakistan has tried to cultivate good relations with afghanistan then with iran not only the uh, monarchy of iran during shah during the you know uh, raza shah palvi and do before the 1979 islamic revolution in iran right but in the post revolution iran so pakistan is concerned with iran not with the regime in iran right so it had got good relations when it was iran under shah and it has got good relation with iran when it is you know under the uh, khomeinis so uh, pakistan is concerned with it then china pakistan you can you might not know the detail of pakistan china relation but china was uh, uh not a communist country it played a uh, you know in the second world war it was an ally of uh, the united states and it defended against you know japan and it fought against japan and that is why china has got the permanent membership in security council um, in the united nations security council but in 1949 when the communist revolution swept china right so then the united nations uh, the, the united states it did not uh, uh, establish diplomatic relations with the people's republic of china which is the communist china right uh, and it was in favor of the the the, uh, the chinese monarchs who were in exile as a result of that uh, revolution but pakistan did not uh, do something like that pakistan established good relations with the communist china against the wishes of the united uh, states initially it had got some you know concerns but later on those concerns were uh, smoothened so then uh, nothing happened and then even pakistan mediated in the establishment of diplomatic relations between the people's republic of china like the communist china and the united states in the 1970s they finally uh, accepted it and you know gave that uh, uh, permanent membership of china in the united nations security council to the communist chinese regime at that time right in the in the united nation so pakistan played an important role in that so that is why uh, when we say that pakistan and china has got uh, what is the common phrase friendship deeper than seas and you know something like that so it is based on this thing right it is based on uh, this history this historical fact then uh, uh, you know 
there are security and economic interest in the Persian Gulf, right? And uh, a lot of uh, bile um, uh, wide-ranging bilateral relations with the United States and other Western countries. So Pakistan has got, you know, uh, these good relations with these countries, apart from that one uh, uh, permanent kind of checkered relation history with India, right? Okay. Due to the intention of Soviet expansion, this was uh, a fact, you know, you cannot deny this fact, no one can deny the, this fact that Soviet Union was um, an expansionist country and it was expanding. So Pakistan, you know, established good relations with China. China was a communist, Soviet Union was a communist. There is another debate that after the death of Stalin, uh, Mao Zedong, you know, he had developed some differences with Khrushchev at the, 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 the um, uh, uh, the Soviet uh, uh, president at that time, right? So uh, he uh, he he did not agree on a lot of uh, points uh, uh, with those leaders of Soviet regimes who were after Stalin, right? So that is why the uh, rift between China, communist China, and communist Soviet Union was also developed, and then Pakistan looked towards the communist China because it was more friendly towards Pakistan than the communist Soviet Union. Right? Uh, Pakistan enjoyed or Pakistan had got good relations with the, the United States of America in much of the Cold War eras or much of the Cold War e years, right? Uh, and then even if we look today, China is one of the closest allies of Pakistan. In, um, uh, you can see it in the shape of CPAC and other development <coughs> projects and even when it comes to uh, you know, like uh, providing security shield to Pakistan against India or any other aggressor, right? In, uh, because over the past couple of years, m uh, many incidents, you know, uh, there were many incidents where Pakistan's security was at stake, but then the backing of Chinese on the back of Pakistan, it uh, uh, proved that uh, Pakistan is not alone in the Committee of Nations and there is a uh, permanent kind of ally on the back of Pakistan. Right, and that is China. Then uh, another historical fact is that Pakistan uh, have uh, Pakistan has maintained good uh, brotherly relations with all of the Muslim countries, not only like you know uh, with the, uh, 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 not only with those Muslim countries who are willing to accept Pakistan as a free country. Uh, as an independent country, but even with those who were not initially willing, like Afghanistan. So Pakistan uh, has got this good brotherly relations and it is trying to maintain it, right? Even in current crisis with Afghanistan, Pakistan, the, the, the voice of Pakistan is echoed like, you know, pa Afghanistan is a brotherly country and we would like to have good relations with Afghanistan, this and that. So this is, uh, uh, and these kind of things are never echoed in favor of India. So these, uh, words they mean a lot you know in 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 diplomatic on diplomatic front in international relations okay okay united states of america and china they are also seen as major partners of pakistan right apart from the muslim countries okay uh, we have fought three wars with india but uh, this is the major major issue of uh, why we fought these three wars, right? Uh, so the Kashmir dispute, uh, which is a very sensitive issue for people in both the countries, so that becomes, uh, uh, that makes it, uh, it difficult for Pakistan and India to have friendly relations. If this dispute is resolved in such a manner that both these states accept that resolution of the, this dispute, then there would be no bad relations between India and Pakistan. They might then live as friendly states, right? Friendly neighboring states. Okay. And then Pakistan has got no diplomatic relations with Israel, right? So relations with, there are no diplomatic relations with Israel and then we have got some uh, irritants in our relation with India over the Kashmir issue, right? Pakistan is not only an active member of the United Nations, right? It was part of Santo, then Seattle, we will discuss in the coming slides that what was it, right? 
these were alliances made against the Soviet expansion by the United States of America. So Pakistan was member of these alliances. Then in 1964, RCD, Regional Cooperation Development, you know, it, this pact was, was signed between Turkey, Iran and Pakistan. Okay. Uh, this is like this, right? Okay, so after the Iranian revolution, you know, this RCD uh, was made obsolete and then later on in 1985, Economic Cooperation Organization uh, was established and after the um, uh, Soviet in, uh, disintegration in uh, the 1990s, the satellites of Soviet Union or you can say that the countries, you know, we, which came out of Soviet Union, the Central Asian Republics, mostly they became part of the ECU afterwards, right? Okay. Uh, then Pakistan is uh, a leading member of the club which opposes Indian membership in the United Nations Security Council because as I have told you that there is P5, right? So Indian membership, the, we are talking about the permanent membership. There, are, there is one permanent membership like the five, five, the permanent five, right, in the Security Council and the rest of the ten members, they rotate after every two years. So uh, Pakistan is not against that uh, rotational membership of India, but India is asking for its permanent membership, like, you know, then it will have uh, a veto power as well. So Pakistan is against this permanent membership in the, and even China is backing this position of Pakistan, right? Okay, again, uh, uh, you can, if you analyze the Pakistan's foreign policy, uh, we uh, started with an independent foreign policy, but unfortunately due to our own weaknesses at domestic front, we could not maintain that independent foreign policy and we tilted towards the communist bloc, right? No, sorry, the, the, the capitalist bloc led by the United States of America, we tilted towards that bloc. Then uh, in patches it pursued independent policy because it was the desire of the policy makers of Pakistan and it should remain independent. Even if you, you, you look towards the foreign policy of Pakistan in the current era, now not only, I'm not talking about 60s and 70s where we tried to pursue independent policy wherever we got an opportunity. Even if you analyze the, the foreign policy of Pakistan in, the, uh, in 2018, yes, today is 2018, right? In 2018, if you analyze this foreign policy of Pakistan, it is kind of independent because it is having balanced relations with China, balanced relations with the United States of America, and balanced relations with Russia, right? So when you have got good relations with all of the countries, then you have got an independent foreign policy. You are just looking to uh, 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 taking care of your own interest, right? And you are pursuing your own interest. You do not take dictates, dictates from anyone. Right? So even this is kind of independent foreign policy that at the same time we are having good relations with the United States of America, we are an, a major non-NATO ally. But on the other hand, we are providing access to Chinese, to Chinese in Gawadar, right? um, which is against the wishes of the United States of America, but Pakistan does not care about it. Pakistan is just doing it, right? So, uh, um, on one side, it is an ally of U.S. in the war against terrorism. On the other side, it is an economic partner uh, um, of China. And then it is looking towards Russia as well, right? So, these kind of approaches, it, 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 it makes it, you know, an independent uh, foreign policy. Uh, okay. Okay, so because of, you know, um, our economic needs, our security needs, because on the one side we had, you know, India, which was uh, a rival country, which is still a rival country of Pakistan, right? And on the other hand, we were economically quite a weak country. We could not cater for our own socioeconomic needs. So we needed to depend on the West, right? Uh, so that is why in the 50s, in the 80s and in the post 9-11, we depended on uh, the United States of America and we depended on the West to uh, cater for the needs of the country, right? Uh, because we wanted these needs to be fulfilled. Okay. 
then again in the religious and uh, religious extremism and in terrorism uh, pakistan is uh, part of the global efforts to counter these uh, issues right and these are uh, issues of, uh, which are on the international agenda not only on the pakistan's agenda but on international agenda so pakistan is following the, that international agenda and pakistan is trying to eradicate these issues from its territory right okay uh, then what are these difficult issues pakistan has taken some of the difficult uh, decisions what are those difficult de decisions like you know carrying out military operations in our own country displacing millions of people inside the country right taking a u turn on the afghan foreign uh, afghan policy you know so pakistan uh, pakistan is uh, basically Uh, so Pakistan is taking this these difficult decisions just because that Pakistan is sincere with these causes and Pakistan uh, accept the, the, these religious extremism and terrorism religion uh, uh, and extremism based on religion uh, it will lead it nowhere and uh, you know it is pushing Pakistan backward rather than pushing it forward right so that is why Pakistan is doing it and Pakistan is part of the international efforts to uh, put its own house in order right okay okay then Pakistan well this is this is uh, this is you can say that Pakistan says that it does not allow its uh, um, uh, it does not allow these uh, militant groups to use its territory but at times you know when there like there are a lot of uh, extremist groups in Pakistan which are a uh, product of Pakistan's efforts uh, in Afghanistan in the 80s you know with the help of the United States of America so as a result of those efforts these extremist groups they just uh, because then at the United States of America needed extremists to defeat Soviet Union over there so it supported Pakistan and Pakistan uh, you know took money and you know fought uh, and prepared these extremists with the help of the United States of America because you know the extremist literature was printed in Nebraska not in Pakistan right this extremist literature was printed over there so you know these are the effects of these things we cannot deny that there are extremist groups prevailing in Pakistan but then Pakistan is trying hard to eradicate them so uh, Pakistan is doing its own effort uh, but these efforts uh, are quite weak because uh, these extremist groups they, are, they, they, they still get funding from uh, some external sources and it becomes really hard for Pakistan to deal with them or um, eliminate them completely okay then uh, we had a threat uh, permanent threat from the uh, on the eastern border like India right uh, but even then Pakistan opted for non-aligned foreign policy and independent foreign policy but when it saw that you know this independent foreign policy can lead it nowhere it is leading it nowhere and the Indian th threat is, is still at large then it look towards other uh, countries like you know towards blocks uh, like the capitalist block that uh, because it needed uh, some guarantees in in, uh, in defense right so those those guarantees were provided by the western countries and Pakistan became part of many um, alliances like CENTO and CETO and Pakistan's uh, policy makers they were of the opinion that as a result of these alliances we will uh, the, as the United States of America will come to the rescue of Pakistan when it is you know uh, under threat from uh, communism or socialism but on the other hand Pakistani policy makers are of the opinion that even if it feels under under threat from India uh, they will uh, try to invoke some of the articles of these alliances against India and then it will be secured right Pakistan will feel um, secured but it wasn't somehow it wasn't the case okay 
I, I, I think I, am, um, I have already covered these points. Uh, what happened in like you know in 1959 uh, and in 1955, Pakistan became part of CATO Southeast Asian uh, Treaty Organization and then CENTO in 1959, right? Uh, this was one of the phrases in those treaties like you know attack on one will be considered attack on all. So when Pakistan became part of these, uh, it, is, it is showing that Pakistan tilted towards the capitalist bloc in the 1950s, right? So these were, uh, this was the attraction for Pakistan, that when I would be under attack, God forbid, so attack on one will be considered attack on all, and then the whole alliance will be uh, mobilized against that aggressor against Pakistan, right? So that was uh, in the minds of the policy makers of Pakistan, but it wasn't the case, right? As it is said that these agreements tend, uh, turned out to be useless uh, in Pakistan-India clash in 1965 and 1971. Why it turned out to be useless? Because uh, in 1965, you, you know that uh, the United States of America said that, okay, uh, as India said, as, I, as we have discussed, that Pakistan was also, in order to uh, have its right over Kashmir, Pakistan also carried out some military operations, clandestine military operations in uh, the Indian occupied Kashmir or Indian held Kashmir. So then that was a retaliation, the 1965 war was a retaliation of that and then India played its card very wisely uh, to mobilize the international community, the, the international opinion against Pakistan. So the United States uh, denied military support to Pakistan in 1965. In 1971, uh, unfortunately, 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 uh, due to our own negative approach towards the Bengalis in East Pakistan, uh, the United uh, States, it denied any kind of support to Pakistan because uh, it it, it said and the public opinion uh, was against Pakistan in the United States of America in the 1971's war because it said that this is a, a regime where uh, it tortures its own people in East Pakistan. You know this was, uh, this became possible because of the propaganda by India which was there, right? And then because of some of our own uh, actions which provided base for that propaganda as well, right? So uh, that is why in, uh, the United States of America denied any kind of support to Pakistan in the 1971 <coughs> war because the public opinion over there was that, that this is a regime which is uh, uh, um, oppressing its own people. This is a regime which is oppressing its own people, right? So uh, that is why we should not provide any kind of support to, to this regime, right? Uh, and in these wars, no country came to the rescue of Pakistan because of uh, different reasons, right? <coughs> then after this defeat in the 1971 war, right, uh, then rather than depending on these agreements and, uh, you know, alliances, Pakistan, uh, you know, tried or Pakistan uh, started another struggle to purchase arms from different sources, right, after this. Well, but when that happened, you know, then the nuclear program was also started. So, uh, due to this defense policy, the expenditure raised and the socio-economic needs of the country suffered a lot, right. So, poverty is prevailing in the country and Pakistan is investing on defense needs because, you know, Pakistan uh, uh, needs protection from Indians ag uh, Indian ag aggression and that is why uh, the socio-economic needs on both sides, they are ignored, right? Okay, <coughs> we will come to this, right? We will come to this. Well, but this nuclear and missile program of the country, it maintains a balance of power in the region, right? Without this balance of power, Pakistan might not even survive, right? 
So this, uh, this maintenance of the balance of power in the region is very important and that is why Pakistan is ignoring the rest of the needs of uh, socio-economic needs of the country but it is just focused on uh, you know on priority basis about the defense needs of the country well and this even this Pak China relations they were promoted why because of the unsafe borders right and to counter this power imbalance in South Asia so Pakistan promoted good relations with China just because of these needs right Because of these issues, you know, Afghanistan issue over the past three or four decades, you can say. Then the Kashmir issue, right? Uh, <coughs> and uh, then Pakistan's nuclear foreign policy. So, on the one side, there is the Afghan issue and why the, the borders became more porous for it. Let us justify, let us discuss this point, right? So, uh, on, the one po on the one hand, there was the Afghan issue. Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan needed to support the Afghan government right in the 80s so Pakistan allowed uh, its border to uh, be that much porous towards Afghanistan so that people can easily cross into Afghanistan from Pakistan into Afghanistan and then the line of control on Kashmir right <coughs> so principally Pakistan is in favor of the right of self-determination of the Kashmiri people so uh, the, after the uh, completion of the Afghan war, uh, the first Afghan war or after the termination of that war, the defeat of Soviet Union in Afghanistan, then what happened that all those fighters who were uh, fighting in Afghanistan and who were going to Afghanistan from Pakistan, then they needed another arena to fight and Kashmir was another arena, right? So in the 1980s or the 1989, when after the Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan, the Kashmiri Intifada began, right? So again, a porous border and, uh, 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 and likewise, these non-state actors are supported by the international actors uh, in Pakistan, right? So when these non-state actors are supported by them, they are also making the borders of Pakistan quite porous because they need to uh, plant people in Pakistan, they need to export some kind of elements to Pakistan through these porous borders from uh, you can say Kashmir, from you can say Afghanistan and even this Gulbashan Yadav you know from Iran. So these, uh, these uh, porous borders, of the, the borders of Pakistan have become more porous because of these issues, right? Well, th these recent developments we uh, actually I mean by it like you know uh, Pakistan and uh, war against terrorism, right? Uh, the post 9-11 world, I'm talking about it, right? And then sporadic incidents in India, like the Mumbai bombing and then, you know, the Samjota Express and this and that, you know, so these kind of issues when, when they occur over there in India, Pakistan is blamed for it. So these are the recent, some of the recent developments and uh, they put a blame on Pakistan for all these kind of things to put it under pressure, right? So this uh, wars in Afghanistan, it has, got, it has created socio-economic issues for Pakistan, right? Because of this war in Afghanistan, the economy of Afghanistan is not prospering and the economy of Pakistan is not prospering because Afghanistan could provide a transit route to Pakistan to Central Asia, but Pakistan cannot tape the Central Asian markets because of turmoil in Afghanistan, right? And then um, with this... Uh, unregulated border of Pakistan and Afghanistan uh, goods are smuggled so the government uh, you know takes no benefit from the trade between in b between Pakistan and uh, Afghanistan because of the, the b because the border is not regulated properly so the smuggled goods they are creating you know why these uh, bada markets are there in Pakistan they are smuggled goods right and they come through Afghanistan so these bara market and uh, uh, they, they, they do not benefit to the uh, treasury of the country because taxes are not levied on them, right? They are, these are goods came to Pakistan in black, right? So the taxes are not there. Uh, 
well and then there is unnecessary foreign aid which is given to pakistan and pakistan uh, and but it, it these this aid is not translated in the socio economic uplift of the country or the development of the common man so uh, uh, normally that is wasted a lot of money goes into you know the hands of the corrupt politicians and this so this is oh, we can say that unnecessary foreign aid or uh, because that is not needed for the country that is needed for the politicians and then they go and then they ask for the aid and aid is given to them but that aid is not spent on the economic uplift of the people rather it goes to the accounts of the corrupt um, politicians or leaders right well so pakistan is because of all these re, all these issues pakistan is included among the poor countries right pakistan is not a prosperous country it is a poor country and it is in the clutches of foreign loans right foreign debt because of all these issues you know security needs economic needs and then you know rivalry with india and then corruption and you know, so, so all these things pakistan is in the current situation right well okay i would uh, uh, just conclude my class over here if you analyze the foreign policy of pakistan right briefly briefly if you analyze the foreign policy of pakistan the foreign policy of pakistan is based on good relations with the, on the principles of establishing good relations with the muslim countries establishing good relations with all of the countries in the world but not compromising on the security needs of the country not compromising on the kashmir issue right so these are some of the uh, basic uh, principles of the foreign policy of pakistan and then we tried over the years we tried to remain neutral in the foreign policy approach but because of our own weaknesses like you know economic weakness and because of our own needs we could not do it so at times we tilted towards the uh, capitalist block to get economic as well as defense assistance from them right so this is a um, a brief overview of the foreign policy of pakistan i thank you all very much